not a good way for someone to start their morning. A pedestrian got hit by a car. Pedestrian's fine. In fact, I don't think he needs the ambulance. He was uh, signing off on the iPad waiver not to be transported. We're down here on the mall by the Federal Reserve. I'm on my way over to the White House, but look at this. You can see inside. They're digging. Digging and destroying the old foundation there, the old exterior steps. Part of the big renovation that's going on there. That take about a year or two. And they're actually uh, also digging up this building. Not digging up, but gutting the insides, putting in new stuff to this building, which is also part of the Federal Reserve. But I think it was originally the Department of the Interior. So this building will be under the renovation hammer pretty soon. Hey, good morning. It is Tuesday. It's going to be really hot today and not much going on. Uh, the Bannon trial is on, but I already missed him. He, he got in really early this morning, so I didn't get a chance to see him. I'm down here at the White House area, just spinning around on a bike. This guy is going the wrong way on a one-way street. <laughs> That'll be interesting. He's like, how come I can't see any stoplights? Because it's one way the other way, dude. Anyway, let's uh, swing over by the White House this morning and then, ah, uh, who knows where we're gonna end up today. flag that was. This is the blob, as I've shown you before. These are the vehicles of the National Security Apparatus, aka the blob. <laughs> and they're the folks that give the president his daily briefing on the state of the world. It's a short 15-minute briefing, I think. I've been told it was delivered on iPads, like disposable iPads. This is the Department of Interior guys, and there's a mariachi band with an accordion protesting something. <laughs> I don't know what. Protect Kastner Range. It's a protest to support something. Thousand letters calling on President Biden to permanently protect Castor Range as a national monument. Castor Range is one of El Paso's most precious resources. We've been working over 50 years to safeguard the cultural, ecological, recreational resource of Castor Range. Yep. Fried chicken? Yep, fried chicken. Thank you. Good night, sir. I'm good. Sir? I'm good. down here at the Capitol and Supreme Court. We just got an alert that they were arresting people. And then I just got an alert that they're done arresting people. We'll see if we can get here. I was enjoying my sandwich. I didn't want to come down here. Yeah, there they are. There's a big police presence. Oh. This is all me 
So they reopened First Street here, and these people went inside first on First Street, blocked the traffic, and then they got arrested. <laughs> Yes, it is hot. <laughs> there over there is the Capitol Dome. We can uh, duck our head up here on the patio. It is truly a pretty building. Quite, quite amazing. Looks beautiful in the sunset when the soft light comes on it. But this is the Library of Congress, folks. It's right across the street from Capitol and the Supreme Court, and it is open to the public for free. All you need to do is scan the QR code on your way in or get a ticket in advance. Guys, greetings from inside the Library of Congress. Yeah, I decided to come in here today, mainly because it's air-conditioned. Let's go be tourists. Let's go up to the main floor. This is the ground floor. Ooh. We're heading up to the first floor now. Now, the main reading room is up here, but we're not allowed in it. We can only look down on it from above. There's a congressman having an event. So here's the main lobby. Holy cow. Pretty impressive, guys. And then over back in here is the main reading room. But before we go there, let's go over this way. And this is the Gutenberg Bible.
It is in Latin. Let's go upstairs. So this just reopened about a month or two ago. Um, there's different levels of access. I'm a tourist right now. I can apply to be a researcher if I was like a PhD student. And before I used to be congressional staff, so I was given access here. The Library of Congress is Congress's library. <laughs> Let's see about going up higher. Congressman, I think. No worries. It's pretty. So we're up on the top level now. Time to go in to the main reading room. go over here we can see the capital. Yep, there it is. See it yet? No, it's too bright. How about now? There it is. <laughs> Pretty cool, yeah? the ceiling. It's pretty intricate. And let's go down this way. I'm going to exhibit Thomas Jefferson's library. So these are pictures from within the Library of Congress's collection. Let's go in the back here. This room in the back is, I believe, Thomas Jefferson's library. The Newtons are part of Jefferson's original library. Gold were recently purchased to reconstitute the library. No ribbons are identical. And book box, if there's a box, it's a missing. So they have his library. And these are the originals, for example. With the green ribbon, these are originals. And then these yellows are copies of the ones and then the boxes are books that he owned but they don't have a copy of into the main reading room. All right, let's head on out. Yeah? But there's more. Wait, now, you might think this is small. There's actually four or five buildings that are connected by a network of tunnels underground. And 
and the stacks, you can't really get access to the stacks. Um, there's where all the books are actually held. So the library is quite large, quite, quite large. This is just sort of the ceremonial bits. <laughs> Here's the ground. Sundial. 